You know how animals, from worms to dogs here like karma, to humans, can be sensitized to perform actions on command. Hey, Karma. Hi. Humans have taken this to the next level and have engineered substances, both digital and physical, that are so addictive that they are like viruses that can cause chronic fatigue or even like cancerous cells for that matter. I'm here in the Tenderloin, the epicenter of San Francisco's opioid epidemic, here to share two reasons why addictions can be just as dangerous as infectious disease. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And this is Karma. And let's get started. Highly purified and potent addictive substances overwhelm and actually deteriorate your body's anti-addiction mechanism in the prefrontal cortex of your brain. It's a part of your brain that governs your impulse control and self-regulation. When humans are vulnerable, like when they're in pain or suffering, the prefrontal cortex allows us to seek pain relief, whether in the form of loving relationships, maybe like here, petting karma that releases natural endorphins or morphine-like substances, or to open a bottle of ibuprofen or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, or even to seek distraction like taking a walk in nature. Yeah, unfortunately, the natural part doesn't really happen in inner city areas, huh? When the pain subsides, your prefrontal cortex tells your body to stop what it's doing and to move on. But when an engineered addictive behavior sneaks in during the vulnerable period, it can overwhelm your body's natural anti-addiction mechanisms in the prefrontal cortex. It's like walking into a dark room and suddenly flipping the light switch. When those lights all turn on at once, it overwhelms your brain. Everything whites out and you can't see what's going on. It's similar to addictive substances that spike blood levels and overwhelm your brain with dopamine. So when that loving relationship turns into hypersexuality or a sex addiction, or when that natural distraction turns into doom scrolling or binging a season of Squid Game, Remember 2021? So it's just like a virus or a cancerous cell that's growing and multiplying while it's evading your immune system and keeping you sick and stuck. The more and more your brain repeats a particular behavior, the more ingrained it becomes and the further it deteriorates your prefrontal cortex. And as the prefrontal cortex atrophies, you lose more and more of your impulse control and your self-regulation allowing the addictive behavior to grow stronger and stronger as the disease progresses. And just like how viruses and cancerous cells are constantly modifying their genetics to stay under the radar of the body's immune system, drug dealers are modifying their fentanyl or their digital fentanyl to constantly keep deteriorating your prefrontal cortex so that you lose more and more of your impulse control and so that your addiction becomes deeper and deeper. It's nothing more than a business model to them. Have you felt this pressure by drug dealers in person or digitally over the internet? How has it affected your community? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're learning something new, please share with your friends and loved ones, especially if they're teetering on the edge of an addiction. Please hit that like button so I can do this more for you. And you can become a member of our exclusive access group so you can join our private Q&As over Zoom. The link is below. Moving on to number two. Number two is incredibly sad because it relates to patients with chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgic encephalomyelitis, what we call ME-CFS, that can follow infections like COVID, what we call long COVID or long haul COVID, Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr virus infections that can lead to mononucleosis or mono, hepatitis or HIV. Potent addictive substances are so intensely stimulating to the dopamine centers of your brain that they leave your brain in a state of withdrawal after that dopamine rush is over. And just like how we are in a vulnerable state in long COVID or with chronic Lyme and the body's immune system is weakened, 
So is the body's anti-addictive mechanism during states of withdrawal that quickly can lead to cravings. Natural substances typically don't have sufficient quantities or potency of addictive substances to have this overwhelming effect on your brain. Like naturally occurring sugars and fruit are bound to fiber to slow the blood glucose spike. Or you can look at opium from the unripe poppy seed compared to synthetic fentanyl or THC in cannabis compared to hash that has insanely high percentages of THC. Or even cocaine found in small quantities naturally in the cocoa leaf compared to the kilos and kilos purified for use on the streets. Some of these withdrawals can be life-threatening, in particular to alcohol, benzodiazepines, and even opioids. Other withdrawal states are just insanely uncomfortable and can leave you vulnerable to what your brain knows is the most efficient way to fixing the withdrawal. And that's re-engaging with the addictive behavior. Did you know that in hospitals, before we had modern drugs, we would actually give IV alcohol to patients who were in a life-threatening alcohol withdrawal state, what we call delirium tremens. Nowadays, we have synthetic medications like benzodiazepines or propofol that we can use, but the point is the same. Your brain knows the fastest way out of that withdrawal state. And while we are in this highly vulnerable withdrawal state, the body is fatigued and exhausted. It's not exactly the same as chronic fatigue syndrome, but it bears a lot of resemblance and it leaves our body in a heavily vulnerable and weakened state, leaving our body susceptible to infection or re-engaging with addiction again. Recognizing that addiction is a disease that deteriorates vital parts of your brain necessary for your behavior, for your personality, and for your impulse control is so important. It's not about blaming those with addiction, nor is it about victimizing them. It's about recognizing that the more any addictive substance is used, the stronger and stronger that addiction or behavior becomes. All addictions start with pain and will end with worse pain. And it's fascinating that psychedelics and ketamine can actually regrow neurons in the prefrontal cortex that gets damaged with repeated cycles of addictive behaviors. Perhaps that's one of the ways that these powerful therapies can help treat addiction at its root cause when used responsibly with therapy and support. With ketamine specifically, is one of the ways that I have treated patients with serious addictions with. I don't mean to oversimplify addiction, and I'm not saying that you and I are like dogs, like karma here, but I am saying that we should not overestimate our self-regulation abilities when we are in vulnerable states, like in pain, or suffering when the prefrontal cortex lowers its guards as we try to find healing and relief from that pain. That is where addictions can start. So what do you believe is the compassionate solution to the opioid epidemic and the other addictive substances that plague San Francisco and the rest of the world? Please leave your comments below respectfully. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. And remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.